Can we play over? Get a... All right, so we're going to start off by me showing you our website, and then I'm going to demonstrate a little bit about, about what we do. And then from there, uh, we'll do a little exercise, just a little icebreaker, and then we'll go from there. Sound good? When I say choice A, I'll tell you what it is, choice B. And then if you want choice A, when I say choice A, raise your hand, and I'll probably ask somebody why you choose that, and then choice B, et cetera, et cetera. Who'd rather be blind? I'd rather be blind because if you ask me if I'd rather be deaf, and I wouldn't hear you ask me if I'd rather be deaf. Who said that's a good point, Donnie? Who said they'd rather be deaf? Let me go to the back to my girl, Kat. Hey, why why do you say you'd rather be poor and find true love? We're together. We're rich and together. Oh. Okay, so... As the video said, our mission is to create environments where youth can share ideas and experiences in order to educate and empower one another, right? So oftentimes we talk about having a serious conversation about race, having a serious conversation about police brutality, um, about the sexes, the battle of the sexes and things like that. Well, we've created this environment to do just that. So first, um, we're going to go ahead and cover some of the stuff we did last year and then we're going to segue into the 2015 topics. Okay, so what I'm going to do is... I'm gonna call out some of the topics on this survey we did last year. Um, these were our top five topics. And um, the videos of these discussions are actually on our YouTube. If you guys wanna check them out. Um, why, why do you think people put so much emphasis on Christians being hypocrites? Mm. Because they're the most vocal. What's that? They're the most vocal. <laughs> they're the most vocal. How so? Because of church or what? The reason about being more vocal is like, say for, okay, you go to church, you know, you go to church and people always say, oh, you know, I'm not bashing anybody, you know, if you're gay, you know, any of that. But, you know, they always say in church, you know, that's a that's an abomination, you know, and they always speak out about it. They don't never keep it in the church. You know, they always go out. They be like, oh, you know, you're gay, you know, you can't, you can't worship God. You know, God doesn't love you if you're gay. You know, so that's why we're saying it's more vocal. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. You want to say what? I'm a pastor. Okay. Am I? Now listen up, listen up. <laughs> My dad's a pastor and my mom's a pastor, so, I mean, me as a pastor's kid, I think Christians are kind of like hypocritical. My sister is gay, so for her to be a preacher's daughter and to be gay, she has to go in the church and, you know, have people in the audience and stuff look at her a different way because she's a preacher's kid and she's gay. That don't make my parents love her any different or anything like that. They'll preach about it and stuff like that, but sometimes I look at her and be like, I feel bad because I'm like, you kind of feel judged when you're in that situation, and th those are your parents, so it's like, wow. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But they're all about love. Yeah, they use it and hate for women. Absolutely. Yeah. Everybody's hypocrite. Everybody's hypocrite. Why is that? Everybody's hypocrite. And just like, um, like one thing I know is we're not supposed to judge people. Everybody judges people without you even knowing sometimes. It just happens. Like sometimes I might look at you. I'm not gonna tell you what I think. <laughs> and I say stuff, and I be like, Nah, that's my boy. Mm -hmm. So we all hypocrites in our own sense. Okay. Just because you don't notice it, don't mean you're not. There's a lot of Christians that think they can tell you when you're going to hell. Like you crack an ill man or joke or something, they quickly tell you you're going to hell. You can't judge me and tell me where I'm going for what I said. Just because you made in His image, don't make you Him. There's, there's individuals in every group, and there's always a few select that are usually the loudest, but most often they are the most wrong. So with Christians, you'll have a few that will be loud and quick to judge and quick to chastise everybody. That doesn't mean the majority is the same way. Um, they, the same, can, same thing can be go for, uh, for white people. You know, you have a few select that are treating black people and other people with different colors wrong, but the vast majority do not. Same thing with black people. You have a small amount that would be thugs, shoot and kill everybody, but the vast majority is not that way. And that same thing goes with every single group, including Christians. Touched on this at Expo. She said there's a double standard between men and women. Who agrees with that? Me. Ah. 
<laughs> like, why are we treated like objects? We are we are people. Just because we sleep with so many people and you sleep with so many girls, why are we judged more than you are? Just like you can sleep with as many girls as you want to, why can't you do that? And I'll be perceived the same way as you. <laughs> perspective men when it comes to moral values men look up to females okay men look up to people you should tell your man this is wrong and he listens to you so if a woman is going out sleeping I mean what does he tell a man I mean he will do more so why are we responsible for your morals shouldn't you have your own moral standing that should be just as high as ours if we keep ours at the same level shouldn't we be equal like shouldn't I not have to like say oh you shouldn't do that you should know better as a human being with a conscience if men look up to women so much and hold them to such a high standard why do y'all go around treating like they don't mean shit to y'all there's got to be some way to get that understanding that there are some people who are like that there are but there are also some people who really do treasure you for the treasures that you are and not and not just want to discard you in any way shape or form I know a lot of females that do this, but it goes back to the portion thing. Um, they'll say, I'll trust you until you do something wrong, right? But see, what you did wrong was being a man. And because their ex, because of their exes or whatever happened in the past, that's already put you in a, in a difficult spot. Let it go. Let things go. Someone hurt you in the past. Okay. Deal with it, move on. And, then, and the thing is, don't jump into something else if you are not fully over the hurt that you have been through. Thank you. <laughs> to me, it's not necessarily about the money. Mm -hmm. If you like what you're doing, mm -hmm. and if you're, success, if you're successful in what you're doing, that'll bring you money. Mm -hmm. You'll never have to work a day in your life. Exactly. Let me get Donnie first. Go ahead. You guys hear that? But I, <laughs> um, <laughs> I think um, as far as money goes, I think money is happiness. Cause there's a lot of times you don't think about it, but money is basically you need money to do everything. Like if, especially in Greenwood, there's not a lot of stuff to do, and everything you might want to do is gonna cost you. Even driving to that place is gonna cost you. Like it's sometimes I don't eat trying to figure out what I want to eat. <laughs> I don't know money I gotta spend for. Like it's a bunch, of, and sometimes it be Bearcat bucks. I don't know. Like, <laughs> Was the question, does money buy happiness or was it success bring does happiness? Success like like in terms of money. Wait, 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 wait. In this sense, we're equating success to money. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm about to say success could be a successful relationship or a successful yeah. okay. career or success. You know, you don't have to be financially well off to have happiness if you're talking about success in general. Because there's some broke people who have a successful relationship and then you have a whole lot of money and be. You know, single and miserable. Go ahead, bro. I mean, I think I think money is only just like a piece of the, the puzzle. Okay. But money is comfort, but at the end of the day, you probably still got problems with your the parents. You need to work out. You still got problems with yourself. You need to work out. You probably feel alone. You know, mm -hmm. and money is only a small part of that. Success is relationships. What we're doing right now. That's success to me. Thank you. Success to me too. <laughs> All right. Success can bring you happiness. Because happiness is conditional. Mm -hmm. You get know what I'm saying? A lot of times happiness is conditional. But what success can't bring you is joy. Joy, okay. joy is divine. You get know what I'm saying? <laughs> and the Bible talks. If you're a straight person, how do you know if it's a choice or not in the situation? I mean, because the person, you hear about suicides with gay people, them getting teased, them not knowing what's wrong with them because they can't help how they feel. So how do you know it's a choice if you're not in the situation? You have to choose. <laughs> when I was younger, I mean, because I've known this for a long time, I used to figure out, I mean, I try to ignore it. You know, you could try to figure out what's wrong with me. Maybe I just wasn't meeting the right guys, you know, whatever it is. But the thing is, you are who you are. You can fight all you want to, you can cut, you can attempt suicide all you want to. But at the end of the day, if you're happy accepting who you are, then be who you are. Just like you're happy accepting that you're straight. I mean, you're straight when you're straight. So, I mean, if I'm happy accepting myself as who I am without costing my life, then why not be happy? Straight, I mean, I'm straight, but the thing is, like, being a straight person, you can't say, is homosexuality a choice when you never had to think about that thing? Our society, what, the main thing is being straight. If it was flipped the other way around, people would be like, how do you know you were straight? Is that a choice? Like, it's the same thing. I am gay. 
so that's whatever. But it's only like a part of me. Like my, it, it's not a choice. Like I tried for like four years to like hide everything from my parents, from my friends. Like it was bad, but like I can't help how I feel about somebody. Mm -hmm. That's real. Mm -hmm. That's real. That's real. I'm a Christian, and I mean, I'm trying to I'm trying to make it so that it don't it don't come out the wrong way. I'm a Christian, and every sin is equal in my eye. Every sin is equal. The only sin that is higher than above than, than everything else is not even that. You de you deny God. That's the highest sin right there. So, like I said, by prefacing that, all that, getting that with all that. I personally believe that it is not a choice. You, we, we see people. The Bible said you. The Bible said you can be born into sin. I feel that homosexuality, like I said, is a sin, and you are born into that. So in that case, yes, you can be born gay. I believe, um, and for that reason, I don't think it's a choice. You can be born that way. Same way that uh, sociopaths out here are born that way. The mentally ill people are born that way. I'm not saying that mental illness is a, is a sin. I'm not equating that. But I'm saying you can be born that way because you are born into sin. We are born into the world into sin. So in that respect, that's why I would think that it's not a choice. I say that it is and it isn't a choice, depending on the person. Because when we had this discussion last year, a guy said he chose to be gay because he wanted to be different. And that's perfectly fine. But... <laughs> um, gosh, you maybe was trying to fuck. Um, but what I've seen a lot of is when um, when people people gravitate towards groups that um, that'll accept them. So if if you feel like you're not being accepted by a certain group, you're going to gravitate and for let for lack of a better word, conform to a group that is accepting of you. So I have seen instances where where people have decided, well, these, this group of people is not accepting me, but the homosexuality community is accepting me. So that's the group they gravitate towards to, and that's in an in extent the group that they conform to. But it's not always a choice. Yeah, I think you can be born gay, but there's certain instances where being homosexual may be a choice for people, or they feel like it's the only thing that, yeah, it's, they have, it's what they have to do, because it's, right now it's the only thing that's acceptable or that's accepting of them, whether for any reason at all. I'm not, I mean, I don't have anything against gay people or nothing. I have gay friends or whatnot, but they get, they get parades and all type of stuff just for liking the same sex. Yeah, they get parades. You don't ever hear no straight day parades. I don't think, I mean, if they want to be equal, I think they should be treated like that. You shouldn't get no parade and no glorification. They keep commercial shows and all that stuff just for liking the same sex. Donnie. For the um the parades and all the stuff that they get and all the you said they get glorified for it or they get you know a picnic or whatever they get famous for it. I think it's the same way that when we scream Black Lives Matter and we get offended when they say All Lives Matter, yeah. it's because at that time we're talking about Black Lives. Right. So they do get to <laughs> because they can finally say, Hey, I'm gay and I'm happy about it, and they finally get the freedom in the past and not shunned for it. Mm -hmm. That's why they have that window, and I think that's why they deserve a window to be able to express it. At first, I thought it was strictly a choice, but after hearing what Al said about you know it being the same, because I'm a Christian as well, being born into it, that makes a lot of sense. Because I think it can be both. Because yeah. I got a couple of homegirls that I still know to this day that I knew for a long time because I was like four, and they always been you know kind of you know their own selves, not what women are supposed to be. And to this day, they walk, talk like a man, and everything. And like it's just one of those questions. I feel like it can be both, man. It's it's not just one or the other. It has to be both. I'm a Christian too, and I don't think it's a sin. Love, love, I mean, the whole point of being a Christian is to love everybody and to A, not judge people, but like when people say, I'm a Christian, everyone thinks, oh, you must hate gay people. No, are you kidding me? Love and acceptance, that's what Christianity is all about. Like, it offends me so bad when people are like, oh, you're a Christian. No, I love everybody. I mean, I go to the gay clinics too. They think if you if you hang around certain people, then you like that. Like you think they think if you talk gay, but somebody gay, you gay. Like if a white person <laughs> marching to Black People Matter, he's not gonna automatically be black. That's not <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> you gotta apply to everything. You can't just pick it where you wanna apply stuff to because it's relevant. Okay. You will lose friends. I lost friends in high school when I came out to my parents and to my friends because they, they're like, you know, I'm cool with you, but I just, I, I can't deal with that. I'm still the same person regardless. But you know, you try to say it first so like you don't build a friendship with that person that you just did. Like we don't want to have to deal with so that. So like, so like they know from the jump. So like I don't have to deal with that later. He was like, McKee, I didn't want to tell you because I love you and I didn't want you to treat me any different. And I said, I'm never going to treat you any differently. Like, I love you, you're my cousin. Like, we've had sleepovers together. Like, we're family. Your choice is your choice. I will respect you as a person. And when I see stuff on, like, his social media and stuff, I'm like, okay, he's happy living his own life. But when my grandmother, the minister, Christian, says, oh my God, no one cares. Why is people putting this mess on here? And it really, like, irritates me because what if that was me? Like, what if somebody was saying that about me? You would be the first one to jump down their throat. And it's actually come to me before. My own father has asked me, was I gay? Because I dress a certain way. That has nothing to do with my sexuality. Because I like to wear big polo shirts or whatever. That has nothing to do with what I like. People do that because they're raised that way. I got an older brother that's gay. I know this. I know him. I don't care if he's gay or not. You can never tell he's gay by who he is. But... I got friends that will stop talking to me because I have an older brother that's gay. The reason they do that is because their parents teach them that way. Their grandmothers, churches, society teaches them that gay, being gay is being wrong. So that's the reason they stop. They think, oh, if they're gay, I can't hang out with them because I may lose friends. I may stop. Other people may think I'm gay. I'm telling you, like, I have gay friends all about it. But at the end of the day, I still stand to my morals like, like it's still wrong. Let's just keep it that way. It's like I just heard him say because I just noticed I said it too. Like we're all saying we have gay friends and then we turn around and say something like, like hey, that's sure. like I'm like, I'm not like, racist because yeah, I got it, black friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's like I'm telling you I got gay friends just yeah, so, so you won't be offended. Yeah. 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 It's like it's like saying no offense, but yeah, yeah. I know I know you got to offend me. Like don't tell me not to take offense to it. Because just because he thinks a certain way. It doesn't necessarily mean that you know, everyone's a bigot or you know everybody dislikes a certain thing um, so extremely. Um, I had uh, at my job uh, last year, I worked with a, a white male who was homosexual. And um, yeah, he was an awesome guy. I mean, I love to talk to him. He was, uh, <laughs> he was very friendly. I mean, All right, here's my question. Okay, before I, anything I say, like I just want to say, like, I literally love everybody. Like, Gay, straight, black, white, fat, skinny, whatever. I love everybody, okay? Um, but I just want to say this, like, all right, so I had, I do music and stuff, and I had this choreographer, and he was gay. And, any, like, I, like, I don't got a problem with anybody who was gay. Like, as long as you respect the boundary, if I tell you that I'm straight, like, we can be cool, you know what I mean? And it always seems like, and, I, and this, this is geared to the guys, I want to ask y'all, um, and this guy crossed that boundary, okay? He crossed the boundary, and I was like, dead it. All right? I, this is for the fellas. Like, do y'all find it harder to be... F do you find it harder to be friends with a gay dude than for females are to be friends? Like, and keep boundaries, like, there, and, and have them respect boundaries. Yeah. I'm a theater and a music kid. I mean, if you if you grow up in the theater, then th there there will be guys who will come up to you and wh who will do some serious serious flirting, and <laughs> and my, my dad my dad's a pastor as well. Um, I, I am the son of a Southern Baptist minister, and you you can only imagine how hard it was for me to even be able to go to the theater because my parents were actually afraid that I was going to. To, to go bi or, or go gay because that, that's the way that they were brought up. My parents, they are almost 60 years old each. That, that's the way that they were brought up. They were brought up the way to think that being gay isn't correct. And quite honestly, that's the way that I was brought up too. And I'm still trying to figure things out myself about where I stand on this. But I know that I, I'm the exact same way. I love everybody. And it, just as long as that boundary isn't crossed, then there's not really going to be a problem there at all with me.
He's talking about that boundary that gay people are um, crossing, but what about the boundary that straight people are crossing? Because I've had gay friends, and you know, uh, or I'd be like, I tell like, one of my guy friends, I'd be like, oh, who she? Who is she? I'd be like, nah, she don't want you. She gay. Be like, shit, she ain't never had me before. But she try me, I can change her life. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like let her like what she likes. Let him like what he likes. But. On the Christian side, I think we as Christians, we're so quick to condemn people. Because I totally agree with Al and um, Kat. A sin is a sin. Me cussing, I cuss like it's going out of style in the next hour. <laughs> so I can't I can't sit here and tell you you're going to hell for being gay when I'm doing the same thing, when I'm sinning. What makes my sin any better than yours? Homosexuality is not what I struggle with, but cursing is. So just because it's not my struggle doesn't mean that I'm better than you. Just because we want a diverse audience, right? Because what most people don't realize is that races usually stay to themselves in the sense that 80% of white people only live around other white people. 80% of black people only live around other black people. So our, our perceptions of what a white person is like or what a black person is like is really up to the media. You see what I'm saying? And in more cases than not, black people are portrayed badly. White people are portrayed as racist, as bigots, as, uh, as um, in insensitive. There you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the point of this is with hearing uh, somebody like Al's opinion or hearing Mariah's opinion or, or uh, um, Noah's opinion, you can get an insight into their world, their life. The definition of racism is to be discriminated against based on a power, um, like a power difference. So like, racism is based on oppression, like if you don't have privilege, like I have white privilege because I'm white. Like you can't be racist to somebody that don't, that doesn't have privilege, you know? So like, hey, like the Black Lives Matter movement, it's about black lives. When people say all lives matter, it's because they're privileged enough to say that. Like, we have more privilege than, because it's like a system of oppression. Mm. Uh, that's it's the system of oppression that's, that's made by white people against people of color. You know why this is so powerful? Because this is what we want. We want we, we're trying to facilitate perspective and we're trying to facilitate empathy as well. Because a lot of people, especially our race, we, we tend to believe and, and, and chunk people in one category like they think like this. White people think like this. But to hear her say that, I think that's more powerful than if I said it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I really want y'all to appreciate what just happened. Go ahead. Thank, you, uh, thank everyone for coming out tonight. You know, I, I, I respect your time and everything. But you know, this is a deep talk. The, the idea of this is so deep. You know, from an international perspective, we need this. All of us, we need this. You know, we have to speak our mind. We have borders in our hearts. Years to walk through it, go through school. Come out and express yourself. See this as a tool to increase your, your confidence level. To be of life has changed today because of what she said, that would take me a long way in life. But what's your issues? We got a lot of issues. That's why we need, we need to talk. My brother, I said that. <laughs> we need to talk. We need to talk. <laughs>